Welcome to The Pursuit, a Cross Point City Church podcast that pursues a deeper dive into the scripture from last week's sermon. I'm Carlos Fernandez, and I'm here with our lead pastor, James Griffin, and also Lane Vrooman, our location pastor, Rome location pastor, soon to be Ackworth location pastor, man. What's the, going on? The one and only, man. That's right. How are yeah. you, bro? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. How, how Happy you, to be here. How are you feeling after uh, a weekend of preaching? It was. I, I really enjoyed it. Good. It's nice to... Jump back in the saddle. It's fun. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, I liked that, it. Man. Came back from your preaching break. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that when I go preach. It's like, yeah, I'm back from my preaching break. Yeah. <laughs> so I love it, man. Well, thanks for jumping in. Oh yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I uh, I got out of town for a few days with the fam. Where right. did you? Was, uh, where Where was I? Yeah, uh, North Georgia, pl- close to where you love to go. I was a little ways away, but we were just up above Blue Ridge. Uh, nice. Cherry Log? Hayesville, okay, yeah, Copper yeah. Hill, that area, bro, middle of nowhere, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were off the grid, off the radar. No cell reception. It was amazing. So rented a cabin. That's why you right. didn't text me back. That's exactly right. <laughs> I didn't text anybody back. <laughs> but uh, right on a stocked trout stream. Hmm. So anyway, man, it was good. Good time with the family. Got some good fishing in. It was legit. That's uh, awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be back, though. Yeah. So anyway, but thanks again for preaching. Thanks yeah. for having me, man. Yeah, it was man. fun. It was fun. Absolutely. So we uh, we want to talk about the news. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Oh. Wait, hold on. Which news? The eclipse? Or <laughs> <laughs> we were just outside looking at the sun, right? <laughs> we were. Uh, Lane Lane tried it with no glasses on. Yeah, I told Carlos that those glasses those are for Trumps. <laughs> Overrated. I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> what? I'm going straight in. Yeah. He is lying. Okay, he used the glasses. That is y'all. That, that, is, that was a lie. I know. Yeah, uh, if his eyes look weird. It's because his exactly. retinas burned out. But uh, but no, man, the news about the move, bro, coming up for you, Lane. Yes, uh, yes. I know you got to talk a little bit about it in the sermon over the weekend. Mm-hmm. We announced it recently. Mm-hmm. That Gosh, man, next year, sending you out to start the next Cross Point City Church location in the Ackworth area. Yep. Talk about that, man. How you feeling? Um, I feel like the Lord's hand is all over it. Mm-hmm. It's It's pretty wild to just have conversations with people that... We're in friend friend groups, conversations that went to the same high school, um, family members, friends. It, it, it feels like a homecoming, but one that, as I touched on this past weekend, is just more redemptive rather than just like catching up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah, to be able to go back in that same area, having experienced significant change by the grace of God, like I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, super excited about what God what God has for me, and I've already had some some really cool conversations with people that that are in the area that are that are excited about what the Lord is is going to do in that area mm-hmm. through Cross Point City Church. So I'm stoked. So yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good, man. L- let me say this, Carlos, for you take us on. I had my assistant Lexi pull some numbers recently from Ackworth, Kennesaw, Marietta and the Dallas area, Mm -hmm. because we're hoping as well that we can get a lot of North Paulding people to go to Ackworth because of the proximity. This is crazy, man. Uh, Active people, individuals in our database right now, 544 people. Hmm. That's awesome. Coming to Cartersville from that general area. So, man, if you're one of those people listening to this, we would love to talk to you. We we have an interest meeting coming up, Lane. I think it's May 19th. That is correct. Sunday, May 19th, after church. We're going to be promoing this in the weeks to come. But if you're in that area, I would love for you to put that on your calendar. We're going to do lunch that day. I think we're going to feed people. I think. Yeah, well, we totally should. Maybe. I don't <laughs> we know. We should. Don't hold me we're, to that. We're going to feed people. I can't remember yeah. if there's food involved it's or not. Okay. But we'll, we are going to have an interest meeting. Yes. And uh, and we're going to talk about the launch of this location and what that's going to look like, timeline, all that stuff. So yes. put it on your calendar, plan to be there. Yes. If you are in the area, I would love nothing more than to personally <laughs> introduce myself if we don't know each other or to catch up. Would love to connect if you feel like the Lord's opening that door to you. Yep. Yeah. And if you don't know what a location looks like and you come to the Cartersville, go to the north. Yeah. It, it's yeah. pretty much a taste of what it what a location right. looks mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. And so, yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome, good. man. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Exciting. So this is location number four for Cross Point City. Location four. Yeah. Man. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Praise God for it, man. Heck we yeah. we need it because we are running out of room yeah. here in Cartersville again. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, excited, man. Just excited yeah. about the opportunity to reach more people with the gospel, man, and, and partner with some amazing churches in that area. That's right. 
I mean, we know God is already at work there, and mm -hmm. uh, we just want to go in very humbly with a spirit of cooperation and just be a part of what God is already doing. So I can't wait to see what the future holds, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So, Lane, <clears throat> yeah, let's just talk, you talked about it in your sermon mm -hmm. that it's just part of your story. And I know this is not a question that we put on there, but did you ever think, like, 10 years ago that you'd be planting a location in Ackworth? <laughs> like, it, that's, no, I, you, uh, I will say when I thought 10 years ago, if I thought about going into that same area, I would be absolutely terrified. Yeah? Yeah, for real. Like, I remember when I first started to get back into the church, being, like, literally every Sunday, almost, like, tensed up. Like, somebody's going to be like, hey, bro, I know you. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, seriously. So I was like, there's not a chance I'm coming back to this place. Not a chance. Yeah. Like, maybe, you know, somewhere far north or south or east or west, certainly another state was in my, was <laughs> in my yeah. framework, you know? Okay. But to he's go back to the same spot. He's trying to pull a Jonah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah. I'm running. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So that's, so really, um, I, I, I wouldn't have thought, uh, I wouldn't have thought that I'd go back to the area, but just realizing that this is, this is really not about me, that this is, this is about the Lord in the sense of like, he's done what he's done in my life. How, how can I mm. manipulate that or use that in a certain way or not in another way? And so I, I think it's given me a certain level of, of courage just knowing that the Lord's hand is in it. So, but yeah, it, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy just mm -hmm. to think about like where in the sermon you shared where you used to be, where you were. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you just shared a little bit about it, but let's just talk about that. How has God redeemed you from all the things that you used to be part of, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, and now that you're going to go back into the community where you used to do all these things, mm -hmm. um, I just think it's cool the way God just uses the, the our brokenness for, mm -hmm. for His glory. You yeah. know, we've talked a lot about it on the pod podcast that He uses our pain as a platform. That's he uses it. our yeah, right, everything sure. that we've done. And so let's just talk a little bit about that. Like yeah. how has God redeemed the things that you've done? Yeah. Man, he's done it in so many different ways. I think if I were to just say it most simply, he has taken the places that you would just be so terrified to have anybody even know about mm. or even um, think that you wrestled in that way. And he's he literally, exactly as you just said, has used it as a platform yeah. for his transformative grace. And so, yeah, I mean... I, I think pastorally, he's used it in a way where, uh, obviously, my story resonates with people who wrestle with addiction, substance, non-substance. I get it um, fully and totally. I also think pastorally and in and through ministry, I I just feel like I get everybody to a certain extent. Like whether <laughs> whether your sin vehicle is alcohol or drugs or or something else, people's stories captivate me. And I think in my own brokenness and, and the awareness of my own need, I feel like I'm able to just connect and, and empathize with people. Mm. So I, I feel that's where like being an addict is certainly a double-edged sword, mostly all negative. But there are, <laughs> but there, are uh, there are a few positive and a few redemptive parts of that that I've seen God really um, allow me to use in, in and through ministry yeah. specifically. Man, I, I was talking to Brandon Smith mm -hmm. about it after Easter, you know, and, and him sharing his story. And he was real honest just about the fears of doing it, yeah. the insecurities of doing it. But I, I just thanked him and I said, bro, People need to hear mm -hmm. these stories. That's right. And I know there's so much shame associated and, and there's so much guilt that comes along with it. But people need to hear these stories of redemption so that they know what's possible. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are so many people that are still trapped in things that they've done, addictions that they can't break free from, that old, that old shame that's still on them because of past mistakes or failures or whatever. And I think the the lie that the enemy causes people to believe is like you just got you're going to be stuck in this forever. Mm -hmm. There yep. is no breaking free. There's no getting out. And it's why I think stories like yours are so important. Stories why Brandon's are so important. And it's why we share these stories publicly is that we want people to see and know, like this is what God can do in the life of a person who would give their lives to Him. Mm -hmm. who would who would finally once and for all come to a place of surrender and just hand the reins over 
and confess, God, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I need you to pull me out of this and set me on a new course. And so I I just, I don't know. I appreciate the honesty. Like, I I don't know about y'all. I love being a part of a church where like nobody's trying to pretend Mm -hmm. and nobody's trying to, to fake their way through it. You know, I just love being a part of a church where people can come in and go, all right, here's my stuff. And, and here's what the Lord has redeemed me from. And here's the help that I still need. And I feel like that's one of the reasons that God is at work like he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like sure. when you think about what the scriptures say, that God opposes proud people, but he gives grace to the humble. Right. <laughs> and when people are humble enough to confess their brokenness, their weakness, their dependency, I think that's where God shows up and he goes to work in a unique way. So I just appreciate you being so honest, man, and, and allowing God to to put his power on display through your weakness. Yeah. You know? Well, if I and, and let me say this, what what I what I love about what you're sharing too is you've for for the figurative language of it, you have put your money where your mouth is on that because and we've talked about this multiple times, but I had somebody reach out to me recently that was just reminding me or or asked me a question about how I first got connected to Crosspoint. Mm-hmm. And when you and I first connected, and as I was given more responsibility and more opportunity in the church, the reality is, is that as, as someone in recovery, as someone who's new to ministry later on in life, I mean, dude, you can just, I mean, you can blow stuff up. You can make really, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you could have played it safe and I wouldn't have had an opportunity even, even in my recovery to explore what a, a vocational calling on my life would look like. And yet you gave me a safe place, not just where I had to win all the time, but I could also mm. fail. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm just thankful that, that it is such a reality to our culture and our church family that it has been a blessing to me individually as well as my entire family. Yeah, so Praise yeah. God for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right, good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, what I was going to say was like uh, the fact that you shared your story. I heard a pastor say, like, if you want to impress people, just share your wins. But if you want to connect with people, share your story. Mm, and good. when you share your story, you do connect with people because yeah, there's yeah, people yeah. in the crowd. I was We were talking about just some good stuff over Easter as a team this morning and just hearing that somebody in the crowd on Sunday was struggling with what, everything that you talked about. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they yep. heard you and they connected with the guy on stage. Mm-hmm. And they, we just have this idea that the guy on stage is like this perfect human being, and it's <laughs> totally wrong. Right? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, but the fact that you were sh- you would share those things openly, and the fact I love our story videos. I love the fact mm-hmm. that people are sharing what they used to do and now how they're moving towards Jesus in such a way that's just changing their life. You totally, know? man. Totally. So if you're out there and you want to share your story, do it. Yeah, yeah because sure. it, it has power. Mm-hmm. You know, it does. like God it is does. moving in your story, and if you don't share it, you might miss a connection with somebody. That's you right. know, yep. um, that's good. Yeah. So, but let's talk about this. So if somebody is struggling with the things that you struggled with, so you said, uh, you know, alcohol, drugs, just substance abuse and all that, how would we encourage somebody? Mm-hmm. Like, what would we talk about? Like, how, if we're sitting across the table from them at coffee, what would we say? Mm-hmm. You know, they come up, they confess, they're saying they're, they're struggling with all this stuff. What would you say? Who wants to go first? Yeah. You go first. What, me? I was going to say you go <laughs> well, first, man. You, I, 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 you're the guy with the lived experience, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think you just spoke to it earlier. Addiction and, and all that it has to offer is such a lie. It is such a lie. It yep. makes you feel ways that are just not true. It yeah. makes you um, hold uh, opinions and whatever. It, it, it is literally a lie from the pits of hell. And yeah. so I think if somebody's struggling in that area, my biggest question is, is like, what are, like what's going on in your head? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Just getting mm-hmm. a feel of like, dude, how yeah. do you feel? Yeah. How do you feel about yourself? Like, what do you what do you feel like your your life's about? Like, what do, what are you living for right now? And and you know, as you kind of get a feel for some of those areas, you can understand whose narrative they're under. Right? It's either a narrative from the enemy or or one from the Lord. Obviously, if somebody's wrestling actively with an addiction, they're probably going to be listening to a bit more of the enemy than they are oh, to yeah. God's voice. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So I, I think that's my that would be my first question. And then with that, to be able to speak God's truth over them and, and the way that they're made in his image and made with a purpose and a mission, and that you know, the, the enemy's goal is just that you squander it or ignore it or, or something mm-hmm. therein. So, yeah. yeah, I think that that would be kind of my first thought. Did, yeah. did that actually answer the question or did a I just little bit. share? Yeah, no, that was good. Idea. Like, 
What would you say to somebody? <laughs> what would I say? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're getting at yeah, it. it yeah, good. yeah, it, it worked. Good. Yeah, like, no, yeah, I, what's going on in your head? Yeah, no, just to kind of peel the layers back a little bit more. I think any any time someone's grasping at something like what we're talking about, you know, any type of addictive behavior, I think in most cases it's all to mask something. Hmm. I'm trying to mask pain. I'm trying to mask fear. I'm trying to mask insecurity, whatever, yeah, sure. loneliness, whatever hmm. it might be. And I think, again, the lie is if I can just get that or do that or participate in that, all of these feelings will somehow disappear or go away. And they might for a brief moment. You might be able to drink the pain away, you know? And then it gets <laughs> yeah. worse. It comes back with but a But that's vengeance. what I'm saying. Yeah. And then w- once that, once the effects of that substance wear off, mm-hmm. then it's back and it's brought with it shame and guilt and condemnation. And now you feel even worse than you did before. And so I, I would want the person to know, number one, it's not going to work. Like whatever you're trying to cover up or hide from or, or do away with in your life, this is not the fix, okay? Mm-hmm. It's not the fix. Uh, I would also want the person to understand, and you alluded to this, the, just the value of life and, and their dignity and their worth as a human being, an image bearer, someone created by God to know him and to be known by him. And then I would want the person to understand as well that the only fix is Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, yes. that what you need to experience true freedom in your life is him. Like you got to take hold of him and you have to surrender your life to him. Like all of those things that you're living under, the addiction will not rid your life of how you're feeling or, or what you're struggling with. The only one who can rid your life of those things is King Jesus. Mm-hmm. He's the only one who can make you a new creation. Mm-hmm. He's the only one who can replace that fear with peace, all, all the struggles with victory. And so ultimately, this is about a person coming back in the right relationship with their creator. And Lane, as you know, living according to the purpose for which they are in the world. Yep. And, and not believing the lies of the enemy that somehow, you know, you can no purpose apart from him. And then all of the shortcomings or the, the pain that you feel for not living it out, you can somehow hide behind other things like... It's all a lie, and it keeps people in, in a place of defeat. And I, I think, again, it leads to a lot of other issues in life that nothing and no one else can fix except for Jesus. And so I would say to the person struggling, man, God loves you. He's got a plan for your life. He wants to know you. He, he can restore you, but you have to give your life fully to him. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Uh, as you were talking, I was thinking, the only thing I would say, well, I would ask him a question. I would probably start with you, like the way you did. Um, and I'd be like, is this what you want? Mm-hmm. You know, like, is this the life you want? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this what you really want to be doing? And they usually would say no. Then I'd tell them to stop doing it. You know, <laughs> it, it, it sounds like, oh, man, that, that. But sometimes you just need somebody to tell you, sure, like, true. you, mm-hmm. because of Jesus, you have a choice now. Mm-hmm. Before you were dead, you couldn't choose. Dead people don't choose. Uh, people who are alive choose, right? The thing that happened at the garden was is that when they ate the apple, they lost the ability to choose good. Mm -hmm. Now God has put that ability back in you. You can choose Jesus, but it's going to be a fight. You know, you, you got to fight. And Mm -hmm. so I would encourage small wins for me when somebody is struggling with addiction, I'd say change your environment. For sure. Change your environment. Start showing up. I know it sounds like a, like us just trying to tell people to come to church Come to church. Yeah. <laughs> Here, For sure. somebody yeah. preach yeah. the gospel every Sunday. You know, if you come to Crosspoint, we're going to preach the gospel every Sunday. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. The songs we sing are going to preach the gospel every Sunday. Like, just put yourself in environments where you get to hear the gospel and be with godly people. That yep. will change a lot, yeah. you know? So just keep showing up. And then just keep putting yourself in environments where they will be, you know, counter to what the darkness was. You mm-hmm. know, those places where you used to, you, you get triggered. Get away from that. Yep. Yeah. And I just encourage them, man, come hang out with me. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. like let, let's walk together because that's a lonely road trying to mm-hmm. fight addiction by yourself. There's so many people that are trying is, to man. do it alone. It is. Yeah. You know? Well, and, I, and I'll say this as well to Carlos, just to piggyback on, on the idea of making a choice. The choice that some people need to make is you got to go to detox mm-hmm. and you got to go to rehab and you need to go to some kind of, of inpatient facility that is Christ centered and gospel centered 
so that you can get the help that you need. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I think one of the other lies, and I know that that some people have success with this, but most don't. I I think for most people struggling with addiction, they're not just gonna like strong arm it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're not just gonna. Well, I got it. I got. It. I'll. I'll. Yeah. Okay. Famous last words, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. From the addict. It's like, oh, I can stop whenever I want. Mm-hmm. Prove it. Okay. Just do it. Stop yeah. now. Most people just can't. Most people need help. Mm-hmm. Um, they need help from the Lord. And they also need help from trained people. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would say to the person struggling as well, if you need help, go get help, man. Yeah. There's too much at stake for you to not get the help that you need. And mm-hmm. so. Humble, humble yourself. Take that step, and reach out if you need to reach out. If you need our help, let us know, man. We got all kinds of access to resources. But Lane, yeah. what are you going to say? No, I, I just, I, th- I think it's back to just reminding everyone that that the addiction is a symptom of something far deeper, and and it is the need of a relationship with your Maker. Yep. Mm-hmm. Period. Yep. A- anything else lacks true power to to change, and so. You know, there's this expression, uh, a dry drunk. So essentially, you can quit drinking, but you still suck as a person. Well, <laughs> it, it's because, again, it's that difference in between behavior modification and heart change. If, if, if your goal is to simply be sober, that's great, and your health will be positively impacted, no doubt. But there is nothing eternally uh, grounded in that, that has the power to ultimately overcome addiction. And again, for it to be that platform for God's glory. Mm. So I, I know a lot of times, especially when I connect with people in recovery, that sometimes they look for recovery, which is critically important, especially physical detox. You yeah, can yeah. die from literally yeah. just stopping something. 100%. You really can die. Right. Like, so that is a, that is a God honoring resource. Um, but if there's nothing uh, that, that that is attached to to God Himself and His redemptive work in our world and in us, it, it just lacks power. Because yeah, recovery yeah, yeah. in and of itself, it's not going to give you what you need. You'll have some helpful tips, dude, right, for right, sure, right, right. and and things will be benefited. But again, it lacks the power that only comes from Christ. Dude, I think mm-hmm. what you said is so valuable. You can't you can't just put things out of your life. You have to put things yeah, into your yeah, life. Exactly. Yes. So if you're the person struggling with addiction, it's not enough to just put the alcohol out or to put the pornography out or to put the the weed out or the, mm-hmm. the drug out. You have to put something in. Mm-hmm. And what you have to put in is, is spiritual in nature, man. Like you have to make deposits into your life each and every day. You have to walk with the Lord. You got to put his word in, his church in, his people in. You got to rely upon his spirit each and every day. And so there is this need to cut off the thing that is wreaking havoc in your life, but then you also have to give your life over right. to the one who created you, and you have to be very intentional about walking in relationship with him and his people. Mm-hmm. So again, I think it's so valuable what you said, man. Don't, don't just put that thing out. You got to put the right thing in. That's right. Yeah. Well, what was the story in scripture that Jesus talked about? The demon, he casted it out, but then it went away, and then it brought more mm-hmm. back, and it's, uh, it's found mm-hmm. everything tidy and everything mm-hmm. like that. Yep, so yep. yeah, if you don't replace those things, then yeah. they're just going to come back even stronger For than sure. before. So yep. For sure. Um, so then let's talk about this. How would somebody who is living in that and wants to start going in the right direction, how do they know they're going in the right direction? Like, mm-hmm. what, what are some things that we can really, like, pinpoint and say, hey, this is how you know you're making some strides, you're making some good decisions, you know, you're following Jesus. Like, how, how would you kind of help somebody with that? I think we've all touched on it, but, man, literally the greatest enemy for someone who is wrestling with any kind of sin, drugs, alcohol, non-substance, whatever, is isolation. And that <laughs> that is what will ultimately mm-hmm. happen. Like, if you're wrestling with sin, you will in some ways, even if you are physically with people by proxy, you will still be isolated spiritually, emotionally, and, and more often than not physically. So I would say one of the greatest first steps that you can take is to step out into community. And again, not just physically, but be known. Like have people know yeah, 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 you. Yeah. Have yep. people know Lane, no, Carlos, good. or Jane. Like, right. dude, I dude, I know you. Like, and out of love, then yeah, they, they know how to come along and support and encourage. You cannot do this on your own. Again, a couple days, a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. I mean, right on. But you want some 
you want some sig- significant eternal change, you need God's people alongside with mm. you and his community. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like that because that's a different. That's a different life. You used to be by yourself. Now that's you're with exactly God's people. Right. So that is a good, yep. a good indicator. That's yep. exactly so. right. But even to what you said, it is possible to still be isolated even within community. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Yeah. So you, uh, you know, like okay, men's discipleship, for example, one of my rules for our dudes on yeah. Tuesday nights has been we don't bullcrap each other. Right. And and I say it like that for a reason, because you can walk into a room of 500 men and sit at a table with 10 guys. And still be isolated mm-hmm. because you're just bullcrapping mm-hmm. those guys around the table, man. You're not being real. You're not being honest. You're not telling the truth. You're not sharing your burdens or you know whatever it might be. So even to your point, it's like it's you got to arrive at a place in life where you're like, okay, I'm just done being the fake me. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm I'm done, and I'm gonna yeah. be the real me, and I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna be known. And it takes a lot of courage to get to that place, but but you will not experience no. true freedom in your life until you get there, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, back to the question that you asked a moment ago, Carlos, I was thinking about a conversation we were having with a group of pastors not long ago, and we were talking about discipleship and how to measure discipleship, and, and we were talking about the subjective nature of measuring discipleship. Mm-hmm. It's hard at times, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, there are certain marks and measures that we might look for as a church, and then others are harder to see. And, you know, I don't know, a couple things come to my mind. Number one, I think if you can talk to people who know the person that we're talking about, and they can see marked change in them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how how does someone know if they're heading in the right direction? Well, if you're married, like, ask your spouse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She'll definitely know. Hey, am I I making progress? Are you seeing any change in me? Mm -hmm. I mean, you live with that person each and every day. They'll be able to tell you. Yeah. Um, I would say to the person, you know, six months from now, a year from now, look back and, and ask yourself the question, have I made progress? Yeah. Can, can I see some fruit? Can I see some change? Like a, I think, again, where people get discouraged is they focus on how far they still need to go, and they far, focus far too little mm-hmm. on how far they've come. Yeah. And I would say to the person, look back and see how far you've come and mm-hmm. be encouraged by the progress you've made. But, but you should see progress mm-hmm. if you're heading in the right direction. You know, the Spirit of God should be changing you, conforming you more to the image and likeness of Christ. And then, I, I don't know, I, I just think in terms of holiness, participation in God's church, there's some things that you can look at, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, am, am I growing in these areas? Mm-hmm. You know, am, am I committed to serving people? Am I committed to generosity? Am, you know, am I putting sin to death by the power of the Holy Spirit? I think there are things that a person can examine and measure personally yeah. to know, right? For sure. What were you going to add to that? No, I was going to say, I mean, exactly. Like, are you changing? Do you see fruit? Uh, I had a picture of uh, just like a plant. Like when you plant a seed somewhere, like you're not getting frustrated because it's not growing like a tree automatically, mm-hmm. but you're excited for every little step, yep, yep. right? You see you see a leaf, you see some fruit here or there, but you're excited about right, it. Right, right. But you just keep watering it because you know it takes time, and that's for the person who's who wants to, to, to just be perfect. All, it's not going to happen. You know, <laughs> right. relax. Right, right, you're right. You're growing, and so are you changing? And the way I kind of measure my growth, I heard a pastor teach this, man, it's probably like almost 10 years ago now. Yeah, it's 2024, so it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he he used the First Corinthians thirteen four through eight yeah. uh, verse, and he said, you know, like love is patient, love is mm-hmm. kind. He says, remove the word love and just put your name. Mm-hmm. And it says, is Carlos patient? Mm-hmm. Is Carlos kind? Yep, yep. Is he less envious, less boastful, less proud, less self seeking, slow? To, and that's the way I measure. Am I getting? Am, am I becoming more patient with people? Yeah. You yep. know, am I am I becoming kinder to people? Do, do, like, is, am I really growing yep. in that yep. way? And that's the way I kind of try to measure my growth. Am I changing? I love. I used to hate it when I would go to the gym and people would be like, "Man, you're just so different." And I was like, "Man, golly, was I that bad?" <laughs> 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 but now I realize, like, no, yeah. that's one of the best compliments you can get, Absolutely. dude. You're you're like a different person. Yep. Yep. And. I'm like, yeah, because I'm becoming more like Jesus. That's right. Mm-hmm. Like the the old me is dying. Right, right. And so that's what you, I love the fact. Ask if you're married, ask your wife, mm-hmm. ask your best friends. Man, yeah. what a great question. How have, how am I growing? Do you yeah. see a difference in me as mm-hmm. I've been right, you know right, walking right. with Jesus? Man, what and be okay with the answer. 
You know, like be all <laughs> yeah, right. They ain't, yeah. They're not going to lie. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that fruit thing is key too, man. I mean, it, when you said that, it just sparked what Paul says in Galatians 5.22 about the fruit of the spirit, mm-hmm. right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, mm-hmm. self-control. That would be another list that I would say, just stack your life up against that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And go, all right, what's that looking like in mm-hmm. me? Yeah. And, and am I growing in all of those areas? Like, I, I don't know about y'all, but when I look at that list, there are some areas that I am constantly challenged oh, yeah. by. Like, I'll be honest and say, I don't think anyone has ever described James Griffin as a gentle man. Really? <laughs> oh, you're so gentle. It's like, <laughs> but, but it's been a source of conviction for me. Sure. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, if that is the fruit, this, this is not fruits of the Spirit, this is fruit. Mm-hmm. That if the Spirit of God is working in my life, I should be growing in all of these. This is a package deal, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like I get one of these and then you know the others yeah, don't matter. Good, yeah. mm-hmm. But I should be growing in that area of life as well in my gentleness. Mm-hmm. I think having daughters has helped me in that some. Mm. I've, I've been forced to grow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all both about to find out because both of y'all are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. That's, um, yeah, that's anyway, real. but no, that's good, man. But I think, again, stacking, I love what you said, stacking your life up and, and just comparing against some of these lists that we find in the pages of scripture and just asking the question Do I look like that? Mm-hmm. And am I growing more into that day by day, month by month, year by year? Yeah. And if you can see progress, be encouraged. Yeah. No, I like that. I think, uh, the enemy will probably whisper, oh, you'll never get there, you know? So that's why you got to look yeah, to yeah. where you used to be and thank yeah. God that you're not the person you used to be, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so as you grow, I think that if you look at the progress, that's the that's the focal point, you know? Mm-hmm. You, but then also looking ahead to the person that God is going to make you and continue to work in, it should excite you yeah. that you haven't arrived, but God is still moving, you know? Yeah, like yeah. it, it's just getting excited. I remember when my mom, we moved here from Jersey and we bought a house and she would go and visit the house it was like a new build and every small uh step she was so excited about <laughs> yeah, we would walk yeah, yeah. in and she'd be like this is where things are gonna go that's how we should be yeah, yeah. we know the finished product when we see jesus everything is gonna come to completion yeah but right now man he's just building the house that's mm-hmm. right you're yeah. right and just get excited about that and so it, it it's just i don't know I, I think just to excite somebody because you can put yourself against that list and be like man i'm just not growing but you are you know, and in five years, it's going to be way better, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, in 10 mm-hmm. years and yeah. 20 years. So. Well, and just don't forget, you will never be the person that you want to be until the day you see Jesus face to face. Yeah. Yep. And that that's what we cannot fail to remember mm-hmm. is that sanctification is a lifelong process, yeah. man. He's going to be working on you until you close your eyes in death mm-hmm. and you see Christ face to face in eternity one day. Yeah. And so I, I'm, it's frustrating at times, isn't it? I mean, and I think as as people, we all hit walls at times. You know, it's like you feel like you're doing pretty good for a while, and then all of a sudden you yeah. do something stupid, or you know, well, I mean, whatever. You know, and I and I think again, as people, we we're all broken, and at times we will all give in to the flesh, and it can be defeating and discouraging. Mm-hmm. But what you can't do is live in that place. Yeah, right. What you have to do is remember the grace of God. Remember that you're a work in progress. <laughs> Remember that God is for you, that he's committed to finishing the work that he has began. Yeah. And then you just remain committed to the work, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you cooperate with the spirit of God so that he can keep doing his work in your life. And you remember, I'll get there one day. Mm-hmm. I'll get there and I'm gonna just keep pressing in toward that goal yeah. and I will get there. Mm. Keep your eyes yeah. on the prize, man. Don't let up. Yeah, I, I think one of the easiest things to do, especially in our sanctification, is you don't if you don't look in the rearview mirror enough, you start to like have this expectation that doesn't like exercise contentment and gratitude because there are moments, uh, specifically you know within recovery or, or or whatever battle with sin you're dealing with, where a certain win would be like. Whole, it would be like a miracle. Holy cow, this tiny little baby step was absolutely huge for me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the problem is, is sometimes that can captivate you less and less. And so all you start to do is focus on the areas where you're still failing or you still need to grow. The enemy gets a hold of that and it, it, it keeps you stuck and paralyzed because you're failing to look back at how far you've mm-hmm. come yeah. by God's grace. And yeah, so just yeah. keeping your perspective in that is super important. It's yeah. one step at a time, one day at a time, 
one second at a time yeah. because anything else is just it's too much yeah yeah no that's so good i actually i remember uh, a guy who who uh relapsed he called me and he was sharing you know just telling me all the stuff and wanted to meet up and i was like okay cool yeah we'll meet up go get coffee and i had to call my friend who used to be a drug addict i mean clean for for many years now and i said dude how do i encourage this guy mm -hmm. like what do i say to him like yeah. i'm about to meet with him in a week like help me right now and he said, I heard this story or his mentor told him this story about uh, a dad teaching a, his son how to ride a bike. And it, to me, it was like the best story you could tell somebody. And he said, if a dad's teaching a kid how to ride a bike and they're going down the street and the kid falls all of a sudden, the dad's not going to tell him, hey, go start back at the house. Right. Yeah, He's going to yeah, pick yeah. him up, yeah. dust him off and just right. say, hey, keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need. That's what God is doing with you right now. He's dusting you off. He's saying, hey, keep going, keep going. We're, we're going home together. I'm right here with you. Don't worry. We're going to keep working. We're going to get better mm -hmm. at all of this. And yep. so I think just like you said, man, just encourage somebody to – you don't have to start over. God is working in you, and right, you've right. made so much progress. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good, it's good man. Um, so, but yeah, so I just, man, I, I just thought that. Would, I hope that encourages somebody. Is what my 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 prayer for is, sure. Because you know? yeah. I know people are struggling. For you know? sure, we we know the world, mm -hmm. and we've seen it. We're, we're, we we look at Instagram and TikTok. We know people aren't where they want to be. So I hope this encourages somebody. <laughs> I don't have to. Look, I don't even have to look on social media. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Just look around, yeah, man. Yeah, look around. Look, yeah, yeah, exactly. So what would you tell somebody who's just stuck in the cycle? You know, just stuck in the cycle of sin that just they feel like they can't get out. You know, this is not the person that's grown a little bit. They just feel like they've hit, like you just said, hit a wall. Mm -hmm. And we can't grow. We can't move. What Like mm -hmm. what would be some encouragement for them? Yeah. You know, the first thing that comes to my mind and, and it's what Paul writes, I, I think I would say first and foremost, you need to examine yourself mm. to see whether you are in the faith, okay? Because the New Testament's very clear. I think about what John wrote, the apostle in First John, time and time again. It's like, dude, if you know him, it's impossible to just continue sinning. And, mm -hmm. and this is not, I'm trying to answer the question the way that you asked it. Yeah. This is not the person who just like struggles with sin along the way. Mm. I'm thinking about the person that is stuck in habitual sin that they just cannot get free from, mm -hmm. okay? I would say examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Mm. Do you know Christ? Ha has there been a true conversion? Have you repented? Have you turned to faith in him? Have you surrendered to his lordship? Does the spirit of God live in you? That's where I would start, yeah. okay? I'm not saying the person doesn't. <laughs> I would start there, okay? Yeah, yeah. If it's just a lifestyle of habitual sin and nothing's changing, then you need to examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. If, if there is no progress, mm -hmm. let me say it like that. If there yeah. is no progress. No growth at all. I would be very, very concerned, okay? okay? Now, if this is a believer in Jesus Christ who is struggling with like the same sin and it just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up and coming up and coming up. That that would probably be somewhat of a different conversation. Okay. And I think part of it for me might be theological in nature. Part of it might be a little bit more pragmatic in nature. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think I'd probably ask about certain disciplines. Tell me about tell me about your discipline in the word and your discipline in prayer and your discipline in community. And talk to me about some of the things that you are doing to open your life up to the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Okay to cooperate with him in the process of his sanctifying work. Yeah. Because I think for the believer in Christ that's stuck in sin, I my guess would be there's not a lot of that happening, right? You know, and this is where I would say sanctification and justification are a bit different. Justification, God does it all. We don't do anything. Mm -hmm. We bring nothing to the table. In sanctification, we at least have to cooperate yeah. with the Spirit of God. Like we don't change us but we are at least putting our lives into the hands of the Holy Spirit through practicing certain disciplines and, and we're opening ourselves up to his work. Mm -hmm. So for the person that's not in the word and not in prayer and not in church and not in community and, okay, well, that there's your answer. Yeah. Why am I struggling? Well, because you're not meeting with the Lord every day mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're not in his presence and you're not inviting the spirit of God to do work in your life. And, and so I would ask some questions about the disciplines. And then if I can say one more thing, and then I'll be quiet and let y'all talk. 
I would also say to the person, um, and my mind goes to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, this could be the thing that, that you see as such a, a burden in your life could be the very thing that God has left there to keep you humble. Hmm. So I think about what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, that he, he talks about this thorn in his hmm. flesh and he prayed on three occasions for God to take it away. And God's like, no, nah, my grace is sufficient. And Paul's like, hey, I started to realize that God's power is made perfect in my weakness. Hmm. And I'm gonna boast in my weakness, right? So that the power of Christ would rest upon me. And so I just wonder at times for people who get so frustrated over that thing in their life that just keeps rearing its ugly head, if that's the thing in their life that if God took away, they, they wouldn't need him anymore. Mm -hmm. If God is leaving some of that stuff in us to keep us humble, to keep us dependent, and it may be that we just need to change our perspective on it. You know, yeah. Instead of seeing this as a burden that needs to be done away with, maybe this is a blessing in my life because it's keeping me close to the Lord. Yeah, it's keeping me on my knees every day. Yeah, dependent upon the Lord, seeking His face, seeking His presence, seeking His power, because this is reminding me each and every day of how much I need Him. Mm. So it might be that you need to change your perspective a bit. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I think you said in the last podcast that, um, just like earlier, like with that person, it sin has a way of just keeping it very individual. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and and the fact that asking those questions, those are some probing questions. Like, does your life look a little bit different? Because if it doesn't, yeah. things won't change. You right, know, right. things don't change until things change. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, That's right. Yeah, I, I in my experience of dealing with people in, in recovery, it's the last thing that you just said that's normally the case that people want to be air quote fixed and yeah. they want to not wrestle with a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So what is wrong within me that this is still something that keeps coming up again? Mm -hmm. Yes. Send that you're not convicted over send that you're not grieving. Over. Like that's, I think categorically a different conversation. Correct. Most people are convicted. Most people want change, but I think, I think the benchmark or paradigm of what they're thinking change looks like means that like oh I, I, I th this I don't deal with this anymore mm -hmm. because th yeah. this is not th th this is something I used to deal with but to, exactly to your point I, I think it's understanding and even changing that paradigm to to someone that's like you, you're gonna walk with a limp for the rest of your <laughs> life period like and and again this is more than just drugs and alcohol i can i know it's easy to make sense of us as an addict but i'm telling you we should all walk with a limp because they, there yeah. are areas of our lives that we uh, struggle to surrender to the Lord. So most of the time when somebody's stuck, it's that they're they're looking to be someone they're not. And it's actually in their weakness and it's mm -hmm. actually in their brokenness that they actually have a strength that's valuable for God's kingdom here on earth or anyone else in in the church or in our community. Mm -hmm. So that's normally that's normally what what I see being the case. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's probably what I try and well, bring to light. The, the comment that you made about walking with a limp, I think it's also important for people to remember there is a difference between sin and temptation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is so important. I mean, yeah. Jesus was tempted, mm -hmm. but he never sinned. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between temptation and sin, right? Mm -hmm. Temptation, to use the illustration that James uses in James 1, it's a fishing illustration, so of course I'm going to use it, you know. <laughs> Tem temptation is like when the enemy has a piece of bait on a hook and, and he's dangling it in front of you. And he knows what bait to use for each and every one. Right. See, like oh, he yeah. knows what's going to lure for us in. Sure. But, but the fact of the matter is sin, it becomes sin when we are lured away and enticed by our own sinful desires. Hmm. And so sin becomes sin when we say yes to temptation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not wrong to be tempted. We're all tempted in various ways. And temptation can be frustrating mm -hmm. because it's like, why won't this go away? And why won't this leave me alone? And why do I keep feeling like this? Because you're broken and you're needy mm -hmm. and you're a sinner and, and the flesh is still there and you got a war against it every day. But you do have a choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do not have to say yes to temptation. The enemy cannot make you sin. The world cannot make you sin. The only thing that results in sin is when you say yes to your own desires, when you give in to your flesh. Mm -hmm. And so for the person too, to get back to the heart of the question, for the person who believes wrongly 
well, I, there's no way out. Like I'm stuck in this and, mm-hmm. and I will forever be stuck. It's your decision to be stuck. Mm-hmm. You are making that choice. Mm-hmm. If you know Christ, you are free. It's mm-hmm. like what I preach on Easter, man. Yeah. The, the old master called sin mm-hmm. has no dominion over you any longer. And if you're still saying yes, it's because you're choosing to say yes. Mm-hmm. You don't have to give in to temptation, all right? And so you can run in the other direction and flee. You can resist the devil. He'll flee. So there's all kinds of choices that you can make yeah. to, to put yourself in a position before God where his power can rest upon you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. I love the. I think people need to have a different idea of what being alive is. Being alive means that you have a choice, mm-hmm. and God, through the power of His Spirit, is allowing you to choose good. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that, you know, I still I used to smoke so much weed. I mean, that was my story. But uh, in high school, I mean, before I went into the Marines, I mean, I was a pothead. That's what you could mm-hmm. categorize me as. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that was that was my title. And you and Lane were hanging out. I was back about in to the say, day. dude, yeah, I would we not have out. Out. <laughs> we, we weren't hanging out. You don't <laughs> act like a pothead. <laughs> hey, you know, it I'm just, joking. but. The way uh, I was, I remember telling somebody the other day, I think we were at church, and I was like, yeah, I still have urges to smoke weed. Yeah. Like, it doesn't leave me. Right, sure. right. But I think God has given me the power yeah. to say no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, to identify the lie. Yeah. This will not satisfy. This will not give you what you're looking for. This will not give you what you want. I am the only one. Mm-hmm. And so I just been able over the years have been able the no's have stacked up yep. that it's so easy to say no yeah, today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not even a question. And I mean, I walk into gyms and I smell it, you yeah. know, and I'm like, what in the world? But I can easily say, no, that's not my life. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jesus has transformed me in such a way that I can say no to this. I I even I can smell it on the guys that I'm playing basketball with and I can have even the confidence, "Hey man, why, why are you smoking?" Mhm. Mm-hmm. And I can share the gospel. Right. I literally did that last week. Somebody, I mean, he's a great hooper, great basketball player. I could smell it on him, and I was like, "Dude, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. why, why are you doing mm-hmm. that? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. so much better than that." Yeah, dude, you are putting yourself in a cage, mm. and I, you could make it so far if you just said no to this one, this one thing that's holding you back, bro. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and so just for some to encourage somebody, like even, I mean, I'm on staff at a church. Yeah, I still get urges to sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think God gives you the power to say no. That's why I think uh, being alive is really being able to choose, Yeah. right? Through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can say no. Yeah, man, that's good. I'll say this one other thing because it it came to mind as you were talking, Carlos. I think this is um, another reason why we have to be so diligent in preaching the gospel to ourselves every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a huge part of making the choice that we're talking about is seeing the beauty and the glory of Christ as something so worth living for Mm. that the thought of giving in to the sin that he died to pay for just becomes a disgusting thought. Mm -hmm. That when we would look upon the sacrifice of Christ, we'd be so overwhelmed by what he's done to save us and that we would then look at sin and see it for what it is. This is what put him there. Mm. That this, this left the scars in his hands and his feet. This resulted in his blood being poured out for me. Why would I want to say yes to that when I can have him? And so part of making this choice, I believe, is preaching the gospel to yourself, seeing Christ high and lifted up, not only on the cross, but on his throne, Mm -hmm. and remembering that he is king of kings, lord of lords, that his way of life is better. And then you say yes to him, man. And, yeah. and part of it is just seeing sin in light of his sacrifice. So, yeah, that's so good, important. Dude. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Uh, pastor, I don't know if it was pastor, but I, I, I had this image that was like sin turns the light on. Mm-hmm. I mean, not sin. Uh, Jesus turns the light on yeah. uh, to to our sin, and he used uh, this image of if you ever been to the club, it's always dark, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you stay all the way to the end of the night, yeah. they turn on the lights, yeah. and you actually see what you've been in, mm. and it's just dirty, and people look messed up, yeah, and it's like all yeah, yeah. that's what the gospel does to your life. Yeah. It no lights it up, no yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Like, so yeah, good. that's a good illustration, dude. Because the club, the club does look nasty yeah. when it the does. light gets turned on. <laughs> turn on yeah. the sure. lights, bro. Turn on the lights. Yeah, um, but no, nah, man. We got one more thing, and I, I don't think I, I think I've talked a lot, but I want y'all to to speak into this, and then we'll we'll close. Uh, but just an encouragement for somebody who's ready to take the next step. Mm-hmm. 
you know they they've been in that sin cycle they've been they just haven't seen any growth like what's the next thing just that one thing that they could do and then we'll we'll, we'll close and and head out what do you guys think i'm looking at lane because his wheels are spinning yeah yeah i don't know we and i i touched on it this this past weekend and you you talk a lot about it but just not wasting the one life you have mm. to live. Yeah. And I think I've, and I was sharing this with, with a group that I'm in, I've done so many funerals. Mm. I've done way, way more funerals than I have weddings. And I actually, I like them more. For diff- I feel like weddings are so like, it's about perfection or whatever, whereas funerals you can just serve people in their greatest need. Either way, that's that's not my point. My point is this. What people share and and the legacy that you leave is either being contributed to each and every day, or it's like, dude, what you, like what are you doing? Mm. And so, my encouragement to the person who is stuck or who is in sin or who wants to take the next step is to not waste your life which is precious and live for the day ultimately that you will meet your maker and not in a fear way but it's like dude what do you want to be known for you mm-hmm. want to be known i mean and and that's when you start to get to the real stuff it's not it you, you realize how much frankly bull crap you know we get we get caught up on but if you um think about your legacy and uh, how the lord has given you a grace and how he has uh, empowered you should you surrender your life to Christ. Man, you've been made for like this amazing purpose and mission. So don't waste your life and think mm. about that last day and live every day like you're heading towards it. Mm. That's I what like I'd that. say. That's good, man. Yeah, not much else. I would just say God has grace for you. Mm-hmm. He has grace Thank for the you. Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> has, I, that's real. And, and he can change the life of any person. Yeah. So good. don't ever believe that you are too far gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Mm-hmm. But you got to come to a place of humility where you would confess your need and give your life fully over to Christ. He's the only one mm-hmm. that can fix it, that can change you, that can restore you, that can save you, that can give you the life you want and you need. You need him. You need his church. And so he has grace, man. Just Take a step in his direction today is mm-hmm. what I would say. Yeah, no, I love that. There's grace for you, and then live your life like you're going to meet Jesus yeah. one day. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Don't waste your life. Yeah, love don't that. waste your life. Well, that's a good place to, uh, to stop, y'all. Thank you guys for listening. And as you go, we want you to know that we love you, and we're here for you, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Pursuit with James Griffin. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll never miss an episode. If you have questions about the message, the scriptures, or faith in general, you can send them to us by texting the word QUESTION to the number 22722. For more information about our church or this podcast, please visit crosspointcity.com or follow us online at Crosspoint City. If you found value in this podcast, we would love it if you took time to like it and share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people know and follow Jesus. And finally, we want to invite you to join us each week for one of our gatherings in person or live on YouTube. We hope to see you soon.